So that's enough from me um, as an introduction, but I'm really excited to present to you now Isabel Arana, who's the co-founder of Sumeria Foundation. Um, she's our first speaker, and I've gotten to know Isabel over the last couple of months, and I'm delighted to let her present today. Um, we need to unmute you, Isabel. I'm oh, going yeah. to have to be your tech person. So if you just, you don't have to do it. What, what you don't have to say next slide, please. Like the, uh, like the Tory politicians do. You say yeah, and I'll. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, first, well, thank you so much for um for asking me to attend and to speak, and Adam for organizing this with Marie Claire. It's an honor to be here today. Um, just quickly on Sumerian, we actually um support social enterprises here in the. UK that are tackling UK social inequality and what we do in there we provide some financial support but also skills support a lot of that skill support is building resilience for these organizations to try and avoid as much risk as possible and succeed in what they're trying to achieve um, my background is very quickly is I've also started some small businesses including Sumerian and have invested historically in businesses and no, any organization no matter what it does typically has three common common traits it's not easy <laughs> um, as we've witnessed today things don't necessarily go to plan so you have to constantly be pivoting and be flexible and it all requires persistence from the founder and massive resilience so i'm going to speak about resilience from an organizational level today um, and we can go to the next the next slide we can if okay it wasn't <laughs> again but we're there i think i need to click on once i've admitted people i've worked out go <laughs> Um, so a little bit, any, any organ, starting any organization requires commitment and resilience. And we think there's three key areas to help build that resilience, one of which Marie Claire alluded to earlier today. But the first thing would be to have a support or mentor. Um, the second thing would be setting, setting targets. And the third would be some level of, of financial, financial support. And we'll go through these in each slide and anyone can ask any questions. So this is, this is a, this is an interactive presentation. So please don't hesitate. Um, next slide. <laughs> Well, I, I, well, I could, I could, I could speak to the next slide. So, well, what we mean by a mentor, um, as as Marie Claire said, it is lonely being at the top, right? And you're never going to be an expert at everything, right? So you could be an expert in mental health, but you wouldn't necessarily be an expert in putting financials together, right? So, it's really important in in the beginning, especially because it is lonely, is to have a critical friend, someone that you can bounce ideas by someone that's going to be honest to give honest and constructive feedback also someone that has different skill sets to yourself um, that can help look at things from a different perspective potentially someone that has network links either either financial channels or in areas that you don't necessarily have a network built around and someone that you can implicitly trust because you want to be able to go to this individual about anything. So, so and it's really important. We believe that a lot of organizations, especially at the beginning, it's really important to have a mentor or critical friend around you. Over time, as an organization grows, but this takes time, you then start building a board at your organization if it makes sense. And then you start putting more processes around that. But in the beginning, we we believe support and a critical friend around there and that's what we do we do at Sumerian we often get involved before a board is in place to help provide that honest feedback to um to founders or management teams next slide please setting targets so so um as we discussed today, all businesses will have many pivot points, especially in the beginning of maybe things won't go to plan. And it's always important to smelt small goals and targets. Obviously, you'll have a vision of where you want your organization to go to, but setting these small goals helps build resilience. You celebrate the small wins but as you track your progress or milestones if things aren't going to plan it doesn't necessarily mean you did a bad job it could be well maybe i'm marketing to the wrong group 
or maybe um, maybe my pricing isn't correct, or how do I work with my critical friend to see how we pivot and move into a different direction? If you don't set, set certain benchmarks in the beginning, you can't really determine how you're proceeding. So, and these can be very small, depending on where you are in the stage of setting up your organization. It could be monthly, it could be quarterly, or it could be annually. It really depends on where you are in the stage of organization, but setting these targets helps give you little, let's say, baby steps to try to get into what you you want to achieve. It also helps you reassess and also stay stay motivated. Normally, some targets, I always say, if, if you set three to five targets, maybe you make three, but you don't make all five, that's not bad. I mean, so, so like I said, it's hard and things never go exactly to plan, but that's why it's really important to set these targets. Next slide, please. And then the last thing, um, because we all need some level of financial support, um, is, is assessing the right type of support your organization needs. So while everyone thinks grant funding is free, typically there could be onerous reporting requirements. So it's really understanding, does this funding make most sense for me? And what are the requirements around this funding? So assuming grant funding does make sense for you, this understand, can you meet the requirements around that funding because it never is really free and then investment comes in many different forms so the question is can I pay this off does does the payment happen every month every quarter will I get cash in at that time to pay that back does this make sense for me because what you don't want to do is have a form of investment put you in a, in a position where you become weak right Investments there to support you and help you, and you don't want the pressure of worrying about paying something back if you can't. So it's really important to understand what form of money would make most sense for your organization. And also, lastly, the person that you're taking the money from, can you trust them? Are they going to be working with you? Um, Maybe work, and if things don't go to plan, how flexible are they, they in terms of the payback around that? Think of whoever you take an investment from as a partnership. And those are my, my three, three areas, I would say, for any growing, small and growing organization to take into account um, to build resilience from the beginning. Does anyone have any questions? I covered three big topics fairly quickly um please ask yeah i think funding um is about when i did my study which um i suppose formed the newly the basis for the new leaf network funding was funding was the top barrier to people that were setting up for, um, their own social enterprises or running their own projects and stuff so i'm pretty sure that there'll be people in the room that would love to tap into your knowledge around investment and stuff anybody out there got a question if you, you can raise your hand or you can in the chat or you can just unmute and crack on. Isabel, <clears throat> it's Yvonne. Yes, yes. Hi, Yvonne. <laughs> Hi. I'm, I'm really interested um, when you talk about um, can I trust this person? Because often if you're in an investment situation, you're dealing with people you don't know. Beyond gut feel, is there any advice you've got for us all about the sort of steps that you can take? to uh, turn that very, very important relationship into trust, you know, some forms of both due diligence as well as using, uh, using your, your instincts. So uh, is this, Yvonne, is your question specifically as related to investment, who you're partnering yes. with? Is that, okay, so, yes. so what we would always say, uh, and I, and, um, the, the best investors, irrespective of the type of money that they're giving, should always say, speak to someone else I invested in. Speak to another founder who understands how hard it is. We always say, in fact, don't listen to us. Speak to the people we've backed and see how we've handled them when things became tough or things didn't go to plan. Your best referral will be people like you who are starting businesses and who've taken investment from that partnership. And we, we strongly encourage that. And I would encourage anyone, if you were to take 
funding, whether grant funding or not grant funding, to ask the people to speak to other entrepreneurs that they've backed and how things were handled when things didn't go to plan. Was that helpful, Yvonne? <laughs> Thanks, Yvonne. Um, Gethin, you've got your hand up very patiently. If, guys, if you could use the chat, just because I can't see hands of everybody, but if you could copy it in the chat, if you do have a question, that helps me know. Go, go for it, Geth. Go for it, Geth. Go for it. Uh, yeah, thank you. That, that, that was great. I really enjoyed I enjoyed that. Um, I just really, I just want to kind of get your view on it, yeah, because um, our company Unlocking Potential has been going for a few years now, but I'm a little bit different right now. So I registered as a limited company. Yeah, uh, and I made the decision not to go for grants or funding. Uh, and the reason for that was a bit like what you said in your uh, presentation is I come from the public sector. I worked there for years, yeah, uh, managing quite large teams. And I got sick to death of the bureaucracy. Yeah, so I made a decision to become a limited company and sell services and then use the money from them services to invest in my business. Uh, and then that meant then that I didn't have to get up, caught up in all of the stuff that comes with the, uh, the SLAs and the KPIs and everything that comes with it. Um, and, and also as well, I kind of had this thing as well, where, and this is against the prison system as a whole, yeah, is like, you know, is because they expect all of us organisations to either be CICs or charities or, uh, or social enterprises, um, and so people only can have a, like a, a wage from that, but in truth, they're still working 16 to 18 hours a day because it's setting up a business uh, where you've got big other massive organizations, yeah, that are limited companies, yeah, that are getting a huge amount of money uh, and shareholders are doing really well out of it, you know. So I kind of took a little bit of a stance, really, in doing something a bit different, but I just wondered what your thoughts was uh, on that sort of model. Good question. Is it so? Um, Gethin, you're right that a lot of the funding funding today won't fund limited companies. Our view on that, I mean, we are we would be an anomaly that we've been backed recently by the UK government to try to change this stance. If if someone like you is is starting an organization, right, and you chose a limited company because that's what's best for you, but you have big social DNA in that organization, why shouldn't you be backed? I mean, we, so we are strong supporters in that. We are agnostic to the legal structure and we're advocating that for other funders to think that way. That is slowly happening, but sadly it's still, the still in the minority. Um, so, so we did get funded by the UK government to be a catalyst for this type of change. So. Hopefully we're successful in doing that, but I have recently seen one of the large um, London-based foundations start to change their stance on it. So it's a it's a big win, but I suspect it'll still take a couple years. So don't wow. give up. <laughs> and and you can you can also follow up with me. Um, you can get my details from Marie Claire if, if helpful. Yeah, that's all. Right. I won't give up, and I'll definitely get you details uh, on five. Things. So I'm, I I've got another five ten. <laughs> Thanks, Gethin. Oh, you're going to. Thanks, Geth. Um, David Morgan has a question, um, and then we're going to try. We're going to have to move on. I'm afraid. Do you want to? Um, if anybody else wants to ask a question, if you've got your question in the chat, we, we can ask it for you. But we need to move on to the next speaker. Um, hi there. Okay, hi Marie. There. So hi all. Um, so just a quick background. Um, so uh, I'm the founder of Entrepreneurs Unlocked. I'm a community interest company. Um, Bit like sort of getting i sort of come out of the public and private sector uh, i suppose my point is around uh, about the legal structures and resilience so i decided to go for a cic mainly because i wanted an organization with a social purpose but i wanted to have sort of the backing of almost being like a limits company with the director you know behind it so i sort of took the view that you know hopefully long term in terms of like the getting sort of stance to be sort of uh, financially uh, not requiring grants, but I think, you know, particularly in the pandemic, um, if I can say the say the word, you know, being a CRC did enable me to access some, you know, emergency funding, COVID relief grants, you know, to keep the fires turning uh, and more importantly, to still provide my services, you know, to the people in prison, the people in the community that needed it. Um, and I get your point. It's a it's a balance, isn't it? You know, if we are socially and ethically um, correct, you know, then I think, you know, we can be whatever structure that we want, 
But, you know, for me, it's, you know, the whole thing about grant funding and commercial funding is, you know, there's money there, you know, but, you know, we're not taking a, we take, I take a wage as a director, you know, but I never take a dividend because uh, that's not really in the constitution. But it's just really tough and hard, isn't it? Just to sort of say, well, how do I get the next three, six months out of the way? Uh, and I think it just wanted to make the point that, you know, whatever works, works for you. But uh, I think, you know, hopefully longer term, as things move on, you know, there will be further investment and I'll be interested, you know, in terms of, you know, things like social investment, you know, rather than grant funding might be a way that I'd like to sort of pursue things in the future. So I just wanted to sort of make that point and sort of um, uh, sort of say hi, if that's OK. Thanks, David.